Welcome to the Working Genius Podcast, where we discuss anything and everything related to the six types of working genius and how it impacts your work and your life. I'm Pat Lanchoni, your host, joined by a big crew of co-hosts, Tracy, Cody, Bo. How are we doing today? I'm back. I've got one and a half legs here, so this should be good. <laughs> nice. Nice. We are a little punchy today. We're having fun. Did we tell the audience that Cody broke his leg? I can't yes, remember. We did. If... In the last episode, we did. Did we address back... it on? All right. Cody broke his leg. I got a, at least two LinkedIn comments of people concerned for me. So thank you, listeners. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were super generous. Very kind. I appreciate you guys. Very good. So we're all here today. We got Karen and Matt in, in studio. And we are going to talk about what, Tracy? Best job, worst job. That's right. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to ask Tracy or 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 Cody that. But anyway, best did, job, worst job. You did a job. great job, Tracy. She I did. lost my job. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so last time we talked about everyone deserves a great job. We and and they do. This is going to be a follow up episode where we're going to have some fun playing kind of a game. I love these kinds of games. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how using working genius is fun to talk about. Hey, if you had to do something different than you're doing it now, knowing you're working genius, what would that be? What would be like the perfect job for you? Not a, the sexiest job in the world, but mm. like what would be a great job that you could probably do and be really happy doing? And then we're going to talk after that about you looking at your working frustrations and your whole profile. What would be the world's worst job, but not one like working at the DMV with all due respect to everybody that works at the DMV, but like <laughs> something that other people would actually really love, but for you, it would be misery. So mm -hmm. we're going to do play both of those games. This is a fun thing to talk about with other people that know they're working genius. Yeah, Bo? I think it's, I, I don't know who you wanted to start with, but as you just did that intro, I thought, of course you love this game, Pat, because of the job that you would like. Isn't it so fitting that you you tee up this conversation for us based on your answer to the question of what would be your best job? So can we start with you? It's crazy that I did, we didn't even think about that because we just did this ourselves. And my dream job, or, or a dream job, I don't mean my dream job because we all have many things we can do. I would love to be a career counselor. The mm -hmm. idea that people would walk into my office and say, I'm here, I don't know what to do, but I want to have a great job. Because I'm an inventor discerner, I love to think about who they are, evaluate that, and then come up with an idea for them that would get them excited, and then have them leave and go off and do that. No gene for me. And then the next person come in. I love that part of the process. So I've always thought, boy, if I, if I had to, for whatever reason, I could hang a shingle and say career counselor, and I would have a ball. And Pat, I, I think this is perfect for you. I mean, you've done this for people on the side for as long as I've known you. But I, I think in the working genius language, it makes total sense because someone comes to you with sort of the biggest wonder question that they're facing in their life, which is, what should I do with my life? What should I do as a career? And you get to use invention and discernment to go, oh, you know, tell me about who you are and how you're wired and what do you, what gets you up in the morning? And like, so you're using all of the tools that you've, you're using one, the way you're wired as an inventor discerner. And then two, all of the tools that you've garnered over your career in this, in, in the workspace to then create this really invented and discerned vision for what they could do for their career. I think it makes total sense. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. I think about it. I do this all the time. And the reason why it would be fun to have a business doing this, because to know that people walking in the door actually wanted it, because so, sometimes I do it for people that aren't that, <laughs> like, I have this really good friend and she's hated her job forever. And I'm always on that, you should do this, you should do this. And I'm coming up with all these ideas and she doesn't act on any of that. She would not be a customer. She just happens to be a friend who hates her job, but she's not really interested in my, you know, invention and discernment around that. So the idea that people would come in hungry and yep. so I could ID them because the problem is with that friend, I feel like I'm constantly galvanizing her and I hate galvanizing. Mm. And so I would like to come into people that are already like motivated, but just don't know and help them figure it out and send them on their way. This explains why you are always trying to tell Cody and I other jobs that we could do. We <laughs> thought that it was you being kind of subtle and was <laughs> more related to like the pruning conversation, but it's just something that's fun for you. That's really clarifying. Yeah, like and that, that is true. 
I mean, that really is true. I'm like, hey, you'd be great at this. And yeah, it probably sounds like I'm like, you should go do that, Bo. <laughs> no, really, you should. It's actually that phrase where you've said, he goes, you know what you'd be great at? And the insinuation is, you're not that good at this. <laughs> <laughs> not my intent at all. At all. <laughs> so Tracy, I... I want to ask you, Tracy's a DE, a discerner, and she's got the genius of enablement. And she came, when we, when we first came up with this idea yesterday, like, would this be interesting? You came up with a profession that is so different than what you do now, but it does use the same geniuses. And tell us yes. about that. So I just spent a significant portion of my like life in a hospital in the ICU with my sister. And I came back from that experience thinking, oh my gosh, I, I could be an ICU nurse. And it's crazy what these nurses, what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis. It's this beautiful combination of art and science. You're trying to figure out what's going on with the patient and it, you're using your discernment constantly. And then the enablement piece, you're caring for the patient, you're working closely with the doctor and executing on things. It was just like, oh my gosh, I could mm. be an ICU nurse in my next life. And you would be every doctor's favorite ICU nurse and every patient's mm -hmm. favorite ICU nurse. Totally. Mm -hmm. yep. And it really would be wonderful for you. And what's so crazy to me that I actually started when I first graduated high school, I went into a nursing program and I wow. thought this, this was my path. And I took, I took a turn and ended up studying industrial psychology, but initially that was my path. And I'm glad you didn't go into nursing for my sake and our sake, but I think you would have been great at it. And, and that's, that's really cool. And I think mm -hmm. it totally makes sense in terms of when you get an opportunity, Tracy, to exercise your discernment in service of other people. That's what the enablement is. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, I get to use this like, you know, intuition and judgment call for the sake of another person. That's where it combines that discernment enablement piece. And so ER, ICU nurse, uh, you would be f fantastic at that. And there are other nurses that would not be the same kind of fit. For instance, like if she worked in a place where it was just a convalescent hospital where she's like rehab and the person mm -hmm. had a plan, the doctor gave them and they just had to stick to that plan. It would be mm -hmm. a different one because that wouldn't exercise her discernment. Totally. She'd go look at the sheet and say, okay, here's what we're going to do today. And there's other people that would like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, one person's trash is another person's treasure. And it's really cool to find that there's multiple treasures you have. You know, even just eight minutes into this conversation, it's making me think, oh, I work with Tracy and hearing her say that reminds me of ways that we can use Tracy, that we're not totally using Tracy. Because you're, mm -hmm. we, even though we teach this stuff and we work with teams, it's so easy to assume, oh, nobody would really want to do that thing that Tracy would love to be able to say, oh, there's something that's sort of sick or maybe isn't working totally well. Can I use my discernment to figure out how we could get that working again? Oh, that's my favorite thing to do. You know, and Karen sitting here, she's also a discerner and, and, and enablement is her genius. And we have just, and this is why I'm constantly moving people in their jobs. If you think about the history of the table group, we hire a person. I, I, I've moved two people like two days into their job, into a different job, because I love figuring out what they, what they would love and what they'd be great at. And, and just after working here for only 24 and a half years, I finally figured out something that Tracy, I mean, that Karen does, that's so great. And it's changed the company, changed my life. And she loves doing it. And, and she's like the chief of staff. She's, she knows everything going on at the company. Cause she's like an ICU nurse. She's like, Nope, Nope, Nope. We shouldn't do that. Nope. Th that's not critical. Yeah. And it has been amazing. And it only took me 24 and a half years. Boy, I'd be a really good career counselor. Wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bo, tell us your job. Yeah, I was thinking about this. I had a hard time coming up with one. And then I thought, I would love to be a camp director. And it was so funny when I said that because the look on Tracy's face was like <laughs> exhausted just thinking about it. But I think I would love coming up with the camp theme and the songs and the, you know, and recruiting people. I'm an inventor galvanizer, recruiting summer camp staff. And then every morning, we're recording this on Valentine's Day. This morning, I woke up with my kids with a cheesy love song from the eighties that I was just blaring at the top of my lungs. I just love the like new ideas, like camp sounds like it would just be this massive blank slate. 
and just get to galvanize the heck out of those kids that would come to summer camp. Because you're an inventor galvanizer, and every day you'd get to invent new stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you'd get to execute on it. That that is hilarious. I'm and signing up for your camp, Bo. That sounds that sounds like a blast. I can tell you we're going to need some nurses at this summer camp. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these ideas aren't going to be discerned and we're going to have some injured kids. Okay. We're also going to need some camp counselors to care yeah. for the possible emotional trauma. <laughs> yeah. And people like Cody are going to be there and they're going to break their leg because they're going to be doing stuff that they shouldn't do. And mm -hmm. somebody's going to have to take care of them. But you would be a great camp counselor. And how fun to go. Yeah. There's other things I could do. How about you, Cody? You're a discerner galvanizer, DG. Yeah, discerner galvanizer. I, I had a couple, but the thing that seemed to resonate most is sort of like this this idea of being like a entrepreneurial coach or a coach of entrepreneurs. So I'm not the person that's going to come up with the new idea, but I love, like you said, if somebody, there were a line of people outside my office that said, hey, we have ideas that we need help discerning and like evaluating, are they good or not good or refining? And then we need some someone to kick us in the pants to go do the thing that would make it go to the next level. That feels like so much fun to me to be able to have people bring me ideas and go that one or not that one or this one, but let's tweak it and then sort of galvanize them for the next steps to make it actually go. That would be a blast all day, every day. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's different than mine because you're saying they, they've already come with an idea, but you're really good at evaluating, yep, good idea, not a good idea, using your intuition. And then, like you said, kicking them in the pants and getting them moving. The kicking them in the pants part, I don't like to do. But yep. you, you're you like, hey, like you, you, and you've said for years, you, can, you would love to have a building where there was 10 companies in it. Yep. And you got to walk around to each one and go, so what, what, what you got today for me? And like, well, we're thinking about doing this. And like, Great idea. Go talk to that guy. You should do this tomorrow. Hmm. That's right. And Pat, the reason there's 10 companies in there is because I'd helicopter into one of their meetings for about a half an hour, which is about the amount of time it takes. If I spend more than a half an hour there, they know I'm not that smart. So if I get out <laughs> of that meeting pretty quickly and then go to the next company, just use some discernment and galvanizing to pull up and shoot here and there, I think I could add a little bit of value. A ton of it. That's what you do here. You do. Yeah. I think that it'd be tough for most people with one leg to kick, pe kick people in the pants, but I think you could do it. If there's somebody that could do it, that, it would be That means you. a lot, Bo. That means a lot. <laughs> hey, Matt, you're a wonder and discernment are your geniuses. What would, be, what would be the career you would do? Probably a therapist or a counselor or a psychologist. Mm -hmm. Yep. Makes sense. And I think that that's something that you gravitate toward in, in the people in your life. You know, you like to give oh, right. advice and it's always very thoughtful. And you're 24. Yeah, it's, it's, it's responsive. And the WD pairing is called the contemplative counselor. So makes sense. Very good. You'd be great at that, Matt. Yeah. And when you're 24 years old, it's nice to know, like, so sometimes people get a job. It's like, I've done this for three years. And to think, so what else am I? There's like, there's a zillion things you can do. Hmm. And if the world turns upside down. There's other things you can do. Yeah, Trace? And we, we use Matt as our resident counselor here at the table group. I know that anytime I'm having a family issue, I need advice, I'm constantly turning to Matt. We all do it. It's crazy. Yeah. It's funny when it says he's your son and he's doing it for you too. <laughs> <laughs> he's the same age as my son. Yeah. He's kind of yeah. like my son. That's funny. That's great. Okay. So that's a, that's a fun extra. I want everybody listening to ask themselves that question. Like, yeah, what other things? Sometimes mm -hmm. that informs what you can do in a hobby, mm -hmm. you know? Like, so I could send a note out to everyone I know and go, by the way, if you ever want career advice, I love doing that. So please know that asking me for that kind of help would actually feed me, and I would enjoy helping you with that. So there's other things in life that we can do. Bo, you, you're lucky you have a slew of children in your house that you get to actually kind of be their day-to-day -day <laughs> camp director. So I want to yeah. stay in your house for a few days. Come on over anytime. You All know, right. it's interesting because we, the, the inverse of this question would also be sort of interesting. And what would be the job that other people would love that you would hate? Because right. we learn things about ourselves when we pay attention to what makes us different. And mm. 
literally just saying those things out loud. I was like, oh yeah, I bring something different to this team than anybody else does. And I should really lean into that without any shame or guilt. And there's also things that other people, of course, would love to do that I would be like, oh, I know that that sounds kind of glamorous, but it sounds terrible. Well, and that's actually what I love about this conversation and, and concept in general is, I mean, we almost titled this one man's trash is another man's treasure. And the, the truth is like, there's probably a bunch of people who just listened to the jobs that we said, boy, that would be mm-hmm. my favorite job and thought, man, that sounds totally miserable to me. And that's mm-hmm. what's the beauty of working genius is we tend to, we, we still, even though we swim in this every day, we think, oh, if that's not the great job for me, it would probably not be good to give to them. But when you discover that their mm-hmm. genius is different than yours, you're like, boy, this is what great teams do. You give people an opportunity to do their highest and best on the team. And then you find other people to fill in the gaps that also get to contribute at a high level and be fulfilled by it. It just, it's pretty amazing that this can all happen. Like this conversation even where, we could take this and say, this is the best job, worst job, and know that there are people even on our own team that would be much better than we are at some of these things. Exactly. And that's the key. On the other thing we said, don't make it too sexy. And this one, don't make it too unsexy. Like right. find the sexiest job in the world that you would hate, right? Yeah. Mm. And I would hate to be the CEO of a railroad, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because, because, that it's it's all about precision and logistics and follow through and and getting things done. There's no like half right in running a railroad or like generally speaking creativity. 80, <laughs> yeah, there's no 80-20. Yeah, 80-20 on that. And 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 similarly being a manager of a bank. You know, mm-hmm. some people would be like, I run a bank. And they, that's like they love that job. And I would that would be really terrible, terrible, terrible for me. And, and it's a great job to run an organization, but most of that job would not be using a lot of discernment because it's pretty well-defined and very little invention because it's like against the law to <laughs> experiment with people's money. And so that would be a terrible fit for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like the way you did that, Pat, because it wasn't just about oh, let me find a job that would make me use my working frustrations. It's actually like, oh, it doesn't allow me to use my working genius. You know, it wasn't just like, because three of us share enablement and tenacity as a working frustration on this Zoom call right here. But you, it's also about not getting to use the very thing that fills you up. Oh my gosh, I just realized I would hate being a nurse in a convalescent hospital. Mm Hmm. And the women and men who do that are, are angels, and I love them. And I know some of them, and I've, I've been around the, that lately. And I just know what they do is they're like, whatever you need, I'll get you. And I, I have to finish. I have to take care of you, change the sheets, get your food. And those are two things I don't like doing, and there's not a lot of IND. So God bless those people who do that. And I would be terrible at it and I wouldn't enjoy it, which is hard to admit because it's such a wonderful, they're like angels yeah. and I would not be good at that kind of being an angel. I think that the, I don't know if you intend to go around the horn here, but as you're describing yeah, yeah, yeah. that, I, I thought, you know, the job I think that I would hate or just I would be miserable in is being a fighter pilot. And I think fighter pilots are so cool. And I think it's really interesting in theory but it sounds terrible to be in a cockpit by yourself and not to like kind of rally people around and have to follow the rules and all the logistics that you would have to maintain. And undeniably, fighter pilots are really cool. But mm-hmm. I just think I would I would end up leading the fighter pilot band or something instead of being <laughs> in the airplane. <laughs> yeah, because it's about precision mm-hmm. and it's about... It's about, you got to follow those rules. I know we all loved watching, you know, Top Gun, but, and they, 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 you know, you get to play football on the beach and you get to, (laughs) but most of it is like, you got to check things. You got to check them two times. You got to check them three times. And for every bit of excitement, there's got to be a lot of precision and that would not be float your boat. No. You would buzz the tower every time you landed. You'd be in such (laughs) trouble. though. I would be. Yeah. They don't want you to invent new ways to land every time. (laughs) Tracy, is there a job that you think would be miserable to you? What's the, what's the opposite? Yes. Your, your best job would be my worst job. The camp director. Yes. I would be so bad at it, Bo, but 
man, would I love to, to, to participate, but I couldn't invent new ideas around activities. I couldn't rally the troops and, and play the music, sing the songs that just, it would not be in my giftings. So it's just, it's crazy to me that your favorite job would be my worst nightmare. The other thing is, in that setting, there is not, you would not get to use your discernment very much. I love Cody's observation. It's not yes. just that you would be defined by your frustrations, but you wouldn't get the opportunity to use your discernment or enablement as much because you'd be organizing the army instead of face to face with a person. That's right. Right. Tracy would actually be a great camp counselor for like a lonely kid who was like, hey, little <laughs> Billy over there, nobody's talking to him. And Tracy would come sure. alongside and say, well, hey, yeah, you're, you're special, Billy. What do you like to do? Let's figure this out. But like, hey, Mrs. Noble, sing us a song. She would just <laughs> run into the woods crying. <laughs> yeah. Let me do it. <laughs> no uh, one would come back. Yeah, it would be super boring. No one would come back. Interesting. And that's the other interesting thing about like working at a hospital or at a camp or whatever else. There's jobs for everybody. And even on the same floor of the hospital or at the same camp, you put them in the wrong role and it could be their worst job ever. Put them in the right role and it could be the best job ever. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Cody, how about you? What would be the worst job for you? Well, I, I we discussed this beforehand. I changed it live. I'll let you guys react to my new worst job ever because it's not only would be the worst job for me. I was trying to think of it like how would I, if someone were relying on me in this job, how bad I'd be mm -hmm. at it. And I think it might be like an executive assistant, like in the sense that <laughs> if someone came to me, because the other piece of this is not just the fact that I would, I'm bad at enablement and tenacity. I'm an ENFP, so I don't do a lot of, you know, J things that's the, in the Myers Briggs. So the idea of calendaring, calendaring, I can't even say the word, let alone do the activity, <laughs> calendaring things. And then keeping, like, if you came to me, Pat, and you're like, when's my next meeting with this leader? I'd be like, oh boy, uh, I don't know. We have to find somebody who knows that answer. And it might even be worse if I were like, you know, like a governor's aide or something like that, because then there'd be mm. almost no discernment that I could utilize. It would be mostly just like, I, I tend to push back if I don't feel like things are the right thing. And so there's probably something in that vein that sounds sexy to other people that I'd be remarkably yeah. bad at. Well, I told Cody something recently that I said, I trust you with my life, Cody. And I do but I wouldn't trust you to give me my daily medication to keep me alive. <laughs> so, so there's different kinds of like trustworthiness, right? And the detail trustworthiness is the thing that, which is a really interesting thing. Now you'd be a great like executive assistant to somebody saying, Hey, I'm a leader. I don't have a lot of creativity and a lot of good judgment. I want you to sort through all the requests that come my way, kick the ones out. You know, you'd be great at that role. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you had to do the follow through, keep things on schedule, that would Not be gonna happen. No. Bad for both parties about, involved. Yeah. How about you, Matt? What would be your worst job that might sound sexy to other people? Might not make a lot of sense because this is what I minored in in college, but being a solopreneur, I took entrepreneurship in college and it made me never ever want to start my own company. Huh. Hmm. How does that factor into your working genius? Well, it's it it's disruptive. Like entrepreneurship in itself is disruptive. You're starting something, you're coming up with an idea and starting something. It's I, I and G. And so hmm. neither of those things are my geniuses and they're both disruptive. And I would much rather have something to respond to, like someone telling me parameters for something or figuring out a puzzle to solve, not just blank whiteboard and hmm. blank road ahead and figure it out and, you know, push to get it done. That is really difficult for me. Hmm. And other people are listening to this thinking, oh, I wish I could do that. Hmm. Karen had a, a very interesting one. Karen said her worst job would be being the Mel Gibson character in Braveheart. Evidently, if anybody actually publishes something for being a revolutionary, Karen would say that probably wouldn't be good for me. So <laughs> I love that that was her answer. <laughs> she doesn't want to be the leader of a revolutionary force who's going to get, yeah, <laughs> come on, everybody, let's go get crushed. 
for yeah. a cause. <laughs> that would be hard. So that's good, Karen. I'll keep that in mind next time we need a revolutionary around here. I won't tap you for to do that job. <laughs> it's such an interesting conversation. And I, I'm thinking, how great would it be for every 18-year-old to be asked this question? Or even mm-hmm. every college student to be asked this question? Because I think that we go into careers, you know, sometimes thinking about what our families did or, or somebody we admired, what did they did or what looks interesting. And to really think about what would be the type of work that's required in that role. And let me say something a little more personal about that, which is I grew up in a family where the men in my family had all become anesthesiologists. And that is definitively not the job you want an inventor galvanizer to do. And I kind (laughs) of knew that at 17, 18, that that wasn't for me. But until you have language for it, it can be mm-hmm. kind of, and my dad put zero pressure on me to do that. In Thank fact, God. Probably all of his friends were kind of like, yeah, Bo probably should do something else, buddy. <laughs> but, <laughs> it, it, but without the language, it can feel sort of like, oh, I'm the first one to not do this mm-hmm. job, or I'm the first one that this doesn't feel like a fit for. Now we have better language to understand why that is and to help people lean into what they should be doing. Oh, when people say they want to be a doctor or a lawyer, I always think, well, but that's that's not even a field. There's so many different kinds. Mm-hmm. So you got to figure that out. Yeah, Cody? Well, I was just going to say, like, I, I'm struck by the way, you know, what Matthew said about his job, which is, at, you know, like four years ago or whatever, when you graduated college, Matthew, that the commencement address for all those college graduates were, go start your own company, go be the next leader, go do, you know, and, and how sad that is that they're, so we sort of indiscriminately hold up certain right. jobs that we feel like, Everybody should want that. And if you're not self-aware about the way you're wired, you could go through your whole life met like Matt and feel like, well, I guess I didn't start a company. So maybe that's not, maybe I didn't achieve what I needed to achieve. But he's mm-hmm. in a role that gets to fully leverage his discerner, wonderer brain. And so I just, it is sort of tragic when people don't have these conversations of, we, we tend to certain jobs up on a pedestal and think, oh, if I couldn't do, if I couldn't be a fighter pilot or a camp counselor or an ICU nurse, you like, maybe I'm a failure when it's really that we're all wired differently. And we just need to find the very thing that we can contribute the best to the world. And 99% of what makes a job good for us is that it taps into our working genius. And too often we think, does this fit what other people expect of me or does this how does this look in society and and you know i remember and we can wrap on this point my mom gave me a book when i was a kid said do what you love and the money will follow you know and money isn't the right measure but it but that happens too really understand your working genius and your working frustrations and use that as the guide for how you spend your time and energy and you are going to drastically increase your satisfaction on a day-to-day level and even over the long term. So mm-hmm. play this game. Best job, worst job. Play it with your friends. You'll enjoy it. It'll be fun. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us on the Working Genius Podcast. And do we have a commercial today? I don't think we do commercials on Working Genius. We did on the last one. I guess the the, the commercial will just be Working Genius. It's a great tool. And <laughs> oh, the one thing we will do a commercial for is our certification program. We've added more classes. They're, they're filling up. And so a lot of people are getting certified so they can do this, take this to parties and, and, and have fun and, and do it with their friends, family, and their company. So check that out, Working Genius Certification. That's our unpaid advertisement. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us and God bless. Bye-bye.